Uh, turn with me, please, to John chapter 14. I just want to read two verses tonight that relate really to what the Lord has done in my life. So, John chapter 14. And I just want to read verse 26 and 27. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I always get so nervous before a meeting like this, but we trust that the Lord will undertake and just help me as I share with you what the Lord has done. It is a great privilege to be able to tell you of the Lord's saving grace in my life. Um, whenever I was about four years old, my mum and dad separated. And around that time, the Jehovah's Witnesses started to call with my mum. And for years, my mum had been searching to find out the truth of what it said in the Bible. As she read her Bible, she believed in her heart that she needed to do something else more than what she was doing at present. And so she went and she spoke to her minister. He was a Presbyterian man. And uh, she asked him about her need of salvation. And he was not a believer. And he basically palmed her off and he, said, he told her to go away and not to worry about these things. And so for years, Mummy went on without getting the answers that she needed, um, searching within her own heart, I suppose. So whenever the Jehovah's Witnesses called on her door, it seemed like finally she was getting the answers that she needed, because I'm sure many of you have talked to them. You know how well versed they are in what they believe. And so whenever Mum put her questions, and she had many to them, they were able to give her an answer. And she thought, finally, I have got the answers uh, to the Bible of what I've been searching for years. And because of this, very quickly, we became very involved with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, it didn't take very long. We, she, was going, she was having a Bible study in our own home. I was living with my mom at this time. And then very soon, we were at all of the meetings. We were going on the doors, and my mom was baptized not that long after it. And just to give you an insight into what it's like to be a Jehovah's Witness, there are lots of meetings in the week, and you might think there's a lot of meetings here, but they are, they're very different meetings. They're preparation meetings, really, for when you go on the doors. And so we had a Tuesday night meeting, and they called that a Bible study. But looking back, I would say it was not a Bible study, because what Jehovah's Witnesses do is they... Um, they study the books that come from the Watchtower Society. Um, and so they said it was a Bible study, but really you were just reading the books that had been sent from the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, Society, which is based in Brooklyn, I think it is now. And um, so we would study that on a Tuesday night. Um, and you would go, you just read through it, you would answer the questions, put up your hand, and, and that's how the meetings were conducted. And then a Thursday night was a different type of meeting. That was where you were trained uh, to go on the doors and to speak to people. And that's why when they come to your door there, they, they know exactly what to say to everything that you put to them. And we would have done role plays. Um, even myself as a child, I can remember going up to the front and doing role plays with my mum. Um, and that would be scenarios that you might meet on the door, for example, and then they would, um, you would be showing how to deal with that. Um, so this is why they are so equipped when you meet them and start to speak to them. Um, and then on a Sunday, again, I think it was, we had two meetings um, on a Sunday, and it's not like how it is here in this church where Armin preaches verse by verse through the Bible. It's, it's again, you're looking at the Watchtower and the Awake magazine, and this is what you study. You're never turned to the Bible, and you, you would look at the Bible maybe for a verse here and there, but it's not a study of the Bible. It's a study of the Jehovah's Witnesses books. And so this is how my childhood was. I didn't know anything else. I had no one really close to me who was a Christian who would tell me otherwise. And so I believed that I would live in a paradise earth. 
Um, I didn't believe that I would go to heaven. We, we believed at that time that only 144,000 people would go to heaven. Um, I didn't believe in hell, and I had wrong views about the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what my life was like as a young child, and we were fully involved in all of the activities of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, but whenever I got to about the age of 14, um, I had lots of friends in school who weren't Jehovah's Witnesses, and I got to that age where I wanted to be going with them and doing things with them, and so I stopped attending the meetings at the Kingdom Hall. Um, and as the years went on, it, it progressed to going to nightclubs and living for the weekend, and that was just my life. And you know, through it all, I always thought that I would go back and I would uh, be a Jehovah's Witness properly, and I believed everything that they had taught me, and I thought maybe when I want to settle down and have a family, I'll go back there. However, the Lord, he had a different plan for me. And when I was 20 years old, I met Armin, um, I was working as a waitress while I was studying at university and he was in the restaurant working there too and that's how we met. And Armin, Armin's family have a connection with the Free Presbyterian Church back in Northern Ireland and uh, through Armin's grandmother and grandfather. And they had eight children and every one of them would have come through the church, went to Sunday school, all the rest of it, and only one went on with the Lord. And then, just around the time that Armin and I had met each other, then there was a move of God, and there were a number in that family, in that circle, who got saved just one after the other. And one of those was Armin's mum, Ruth. And also his sister, she had been saved years ago, and she had backslid, and then she came back to the Lord again. And so things for Armin changed. Um, all of a sudden, he was being asked to come to church, and he'd never been in church for years and years. And so this was a big change in his family. Um, and I can remember many conversations that him and I had as we talked about what was happening in his family. Um, well, I thought they were crazy, <laughs> um, thinking that they were going to heaven. That was one thing that I can remember vividly, thinking that this was just madness. And um, we had lots of interesting conversations because Armin had an atheistic background and beliefs, and me with my Jehovah's Witness background, um, the conversations were in interesting, needless to say. But on the 30 13th of May 2002, Armin was saved. And it just came out of the blue. Um, he went to a church service, and after that, he got saved in the early hours of the morning. And overnight, there was a change in him. I could see it straight away. He no longer wanted to go to nightclubs. His language cleaned up overnight, and he wanted to go to church all the time. And I knew that something real had happened in his life. Um, and because of that, I was intrigued to find out what it was. And when he asked me to go to church with him, I said, I'll go. So two weeks later, 24th of May, 2002, I went out to church and the Reverend Park, who was here, I'm sure many of you met him, he was preaching that night in our home congregation on the passage Hebrews 2, verse 3. How shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? And that message was powerful. It was powerfully preached and the Lord really applied it to my heart that night. It was the first time that I had ever heard hellfire preached. And, you know, before the meeting, I was saying, I don't believe any of this, Armin, but I'm going to go with you. And somewhere in that meeting, it's like the Lord just opened my eyes. He turned on the light bulb or something. I don't know how to explain it, but I was in complete darkness when I walked in. And somewhere along the lines in that meeting, the Lord just opened my eyes and I could see my need of him. I could see that I was a sinner and that the only thing that I needed was the Lord. And that night I put my faith and my trust in him. And praise God, he has kept me until this day. So what does it mean for me to be a Christian? Well, thinking about my past as a Jehovah's Witness, I can say that I now have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus um, as a Jehovah's Witness, as I've said already, you have no relationship with the Lord. Um, you, you, you have a relationship with the Watchtower Society, I suppose you could say, because they tell you what to do, what to say, what to think. But that's all changed now. 
Um, and because of this personal relationship that I have with my Saviour, I can pray to him directly and I know that he hears me and that he answers my prayers. Um, the first burden I had as a young Christian was for my family. Um, my mum at this stage was, uh, she had left the Jehovah's Witnesses as well, but just like me until that point, she still believed that at some day, some point she would go back. Um, so when I came home and I said I'd got saved, um, it was a shock to her. And she was quite hard, I suppose, about it in the beginning. But the Lord worked in her life as well, and he softened her to the gospel. And it started by her taking personal testimony books from me that I was reading, and she would come and ask for them. And then she would come to meetings like this, our special family night services that we had, and then a year and a half after I got saved, the Lord saved her too. And so I'm so thankful for that. It's such a blessing to know that my mum is also saved. Um, but there's many others in my family that aren't saved, I'm sure, just like many of you that are here tonight. And so the burden continues to pray for these ones as well. Um, I can see the Lord's hand so mightily in my life in these last 13 years and it's just wonderful to look back and see what he has done. Um, in 2005 Armin and I got married and then in 2007 we headed off to Australia to help in a little work out there in Port Lincoln and Locke and that was a strange thing in a way because we were so new in our faith and so immature and um, but it was a, a wonderful training ground for us and we thoroughly enjoyed it. And then back to Northern Ireland we came, Armin went to Bible College and we had Alyssa and Lois. And then the call came for Canada. And I'll not lie to you, it was a big shock. <laughs> it was a difficult thing for me. Um, but we were so filled with joy to know that the Lord had a work for us here and that it was so clear that he had led us in this way. And so there's natural sadness for us to have left our home and our family, but we're so happy as well. And I was thinking about our farewell service just this week and our clerk of session, Norman Hanna, he prayed for us on that Sunday night just before we left to come here. And he said, um, he asked the Lord that, that he would be with us in our going out and in our coming in. And then he said this, that we would fall in love with the people and with the place Calgary. And I can honestly say that the Lord has answered that prayer over and above what we could ever have wanted or imagined. Um, if you're a Christian here tonight, I want to encourage you to step out and to do something for God. Um, we can often feel like we can't do this and we can't do that. And I feel it myself, even to stand up and to speak like this is not an easy thing. But yet when we do it, the Lord, when we open our mouth, the Lord fills, up, fills it for us. And he promises that when we give our lives completely to him, that he will bless us. And so I want to leave the scripture with you in Matthew 28, verse 20. It says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And what better promise is there for us as Christians to, um, to think about that promise that God will always be with us. For those of you who are here and you're not saved, um, I read that passage in John to start with where it talks about peace. And you don't know anything about perfect peace. And I can say that because I know I was in your position and I know for a surety that you know nothing of this perfect peace. And however, I recommend my Saviour to you wholeheartedly. He is a wonderful Saviour. In the high times, in the low times in life, God is good. And he gives peace no matter what. Um, sometimes you hear people talking about God as if when you get saved that everything's going to be good and you'll not have any heartaches, but that's not the case. However, the most wonderful thing to know is that you have God's presence through all the trials in our life. So I want to leave a scripture with you, and it's John chapter 1, verse 29. And this is what I pray that you will do tonight. It says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And I pray tonight that you will look to God and see that Lamb of God and that you will know your sins forgiven once and for all.